We're just a couple days away from the first round of the 2023 NFL Draft. I am Taylor Vismore, and today I'm joined by none other than Scott Bear, who has looked at every possibility and every theory and has come up with his final mock draft of 2023. This guy's made like eight or nine of these mock drafts, you guys. So many. So you have many. no idea. <laughs> so many, but this one is the final one, and it's so final that he made a change this morning to it. So let's just jump right into it to Scott Bear's mock draft presented by Georgia Lottery. As we know, the Chicago Bears traded their first overall draft pick to the Carolina Panthers for four draft picks and wide receiver DJ Moore. They, of course, will be picking ninth overall. But Scott, who's going to be a Panther? Who's the first off the board this year? In every other mock draft except this one, I have the Panthers taking CJ Stroud. But the evidence seems overwhelming, guys. It just seems like the pick is going to be Alabama quarterback Bryce Young. And the only negative thing that you can really say about him is that he's 5'10". He's quote unquote undersized. Well, I'm 5'6", so short guys unite. I would love to see an under six foot quarterback go number one overall. This guy is a magician. It's hard to find fault with how he plays. Just look at these highlights. He can do everything. I think Carolina ultimately makes Young the pick at number one. Yeah, I think it's a toss up between Stroud and Young for quarterback one and two in this draft. But I mean, he's a Heisman winner and a Heisman finalist from last year. He has yeah. a national championship under his belt. I mean, the accolades and the awards for Young just keep going on and on. So he's number one overall, but you have Stroud going number two to the Houston Texans. But a lot of people are thinking that they might not take a quarterback. They might take someone else. Talk to me about that. Or is that a smoke screen during draft week to make everybody wonder? Could be. Well, I'm going to do everyone a favor here. I'm going to sift through the smoke and realize that Houston is not crazy. And they're going to make the smart, logical pick, which is Ohio State quarterback C.J. Stroud. Look, we saw how good he was against Georgia. That's as good of a college football game that a quarterback can play. He was dynamic. He was awesome. Didn't come out with the win, but I think ultimately deserves to be the number two overall pick. He's bigger. He's accurate. He can do just about everything. Yeah, like I said, it's I think it's between him and Young, which, which one's like quarterback one and quarterback two. And I think if you have the opportunity to take the number two guy, you have to, right? Gotta do it. But a lot of people are thinking that they might take an edge rusher, Will Anderson, who you have going to the Cardinals third overall. Talk to me about this guy. Now, in our mock draft, no trades. No trades. But I think Arizona is going to have their phone on and could definitely trade out of this pick. But with the inability to trade in our mock, you got to go with Will Anderson, right? Look at this guy. He comes off the edge. He can play the run. He's a dynamic pass rusher. I think it's pretty safe. And look, the Cardinals need everything but quarterback. He's a guy that uh, is a pretty easy pick for me. Yeah, Will Anderson has been at the top of everyone's mock draft all offseason. I think it's pretty clear that he's going to go, especially in that top five realm. But I, you're saying that they could also trade for another team that wants a quarterback. And you have this quarterback going fourth overall, which I think is a little crazy. I have Will Levis going instead of Anthony Richardson. Talk to me about him. Yeah, you want to like fit me for a straight jacket <laughs> it, like if I take Anthony Richardson here. Because look, don't look at his box score, okay? The completion percentage at Florida, not pretty. But I think what the Colts can see is a vision of him becoming a generational type quarterback. We can both agree that he's got talent, right? Mm -hmm. He can do everything. But can he be refined? Can he be developed? Uh, the, I think the Colts take a big gamble here, a big swing. Do they hit a home run or do they strike out? We're not going to know. But I think Anthony Richardson going number three. Yeah, for me personally, four. there's there's just too many questions that are left unanswered with Anthony Richardson. And I think that you get more of those answers from someone like Will Levis, who I have going here. I think he fits the Colts a little bit more. He fits that bill and he fits that offense it's just a little bit better. But we'll see what happens. That happens on Thursday. But moving right along, number five overall, you have Tyree. Wilson going to the Seattle Seahawks. I, I think Falcons fans would be a little upset about this one, right? Because he's such a dynamic edge rusher. He's a big dude. He probably could have built him in a lab, right? He's over 6'5". He's got a wingspan like a pterodactyl, yeah. for goodness sakes. <laughs> he can play the run, play the pass. And Seattle just added two interior defensive linemen in free agency. That's why I think they look to the edge here. Uh, with this pick. Yeah, I'm going to keep my thoughts on Tyree for a little bit later, mm -hmm. maybe around number eight. I don't know. Maybe. But <laughs> let's just look at the number six, though. You have Jalen Carter, who I have going to the Seahawks, going here to Detroit. Talk to me about why Jalen Carter. When I look at the Lions, last year they drafted Aiden Hutchinson. Mm -hmm. Good pick, a guy who can get after it on the edge. You want to partner him with Jalen Carter? Good freaking luck in the NFC North. This guy can do everything. He's maybe the best player regardless of position in terms of talent. When he's at his best, 
like we saw during the college football playoff, my goodness, he is a game wrecker. There are some red flags, but I do think ultimately Dan Campbell and the Detroit Lions sitting at number six think they might have got the number one overall pick with a talent like this. Yeah, he was slated for a little bit as the number one overall pick. And I mean, he has an, not many people get to say they are a national champion, much less a two-time back-to-back national champion and an All-American mm -hmm. as well. But let's talk about a team that you know very well, the Las Vegas Raiders. Who do you have them taking seventh overall? Yeah, I used to cover these guys for eight years and I know what their defense is like it's not in good shape at all <laughs> that's why some people think hey th that they're in the quarterback market I think that they're in a full-scale rebuild that's what I okay. think so you go out and you get the best quarter corner back on the board that's Christian that's Christian Gonzalez if I can say his name right Christian Gonzalez can do everything well talk about being built in a lab that's what this guy is Raiders make the safe pick. Yeah, I think this is like one of the best corners in the draft. And I think I have the Va the Raiders, excuse me, taking a quarterback, not a corner, but we'll see what shakes out on Thursday. But let's get to the question that everyone watching Here we go. wants to talk about. Number eight overall, the Atlanta Falcons have it. You have B. John Robinson. Talk to me about this running back. Uh, this, this guy can do everything well. He can line up in any spot. He can break tackles. He can run through you. He can run around you. And I just have these visions, Taylor. I have these visions of Arthur Smith playing quote unquote positionless football and you give him a skill set like this, what he can do creatively with B. John Robinson and then, and then you think about it, you have Algier, Kyle Pitts, Drake London, Johnu Smith, I can go on and on and on, Cordero Patterson and then you add this player to it, the Falcons could have the most dynamic group of skilled players in the entire league. That's a big statement, it's, it would be a huge add here. Look, I know what you're going to say, right? Running back at eight? Uh, have, I, have I lost my mind? Yeah, I think, it's a, I think it's a little ambitious to take a running back in the top 10, much less the first round. I think, you, you know, you're seeing what's happening with Saquon Barkley and the Giants right now and, and getting a second contract deal going, working with that. And I just think it's a little ambitious to take a running back so soon. I think if the Falcons trade down, it becomes a little bit more viable. But I have us taking Tyree Wilson. The, you have him going earlier, but I have the edge rusher from Texas Tech coming here at eight. I think, I mean, if he's on the board, right? If he's still available, he's the best available. You have to get this, this edge rusher. I mean, look, the Falcons have worked so hard this free agency in bolstering up their defense. This is the, the bow to just seal it, to totally make it one of the best defenses maybe in the NFL. I don't want to get too crazy with what I'm saying, but Tyree will definitely help this defense just a little bit more to maybe get over that hump. So we'll see. And look, we're about to do something unprecedented right now. We're going to agree on something. Yes. <laughs> and if Tyree Wilson is available, which is possible if four quarterbacks go, I turn my phone off, I don't want to hear any calls, and I make the safe pick. I like this guy just as much as you do. Yeah, I like the edge rusher, but he could be off the board and the Falcons might still be looking for an edge. That's why our Tory McElhaney has the Falcons actually trading down in the first round and getting Lucas Van Ness, the edge rusher, out of Iowa. So could happen, could be an edge anyway, but we'll have to see. Yeah, and the big question mark is, could they go cornerback? Mm -hmm. It's definitely possible. In this mock draft, Devin Witherspoon still on the board. That would be pretty enticing at number eight, too. Yeah, and if Christian Gonzalez is there as well, if Las Vegas don't actually take him, he could still be on the board as well. But if you have someone like Jeff Bakuda, that's a one-year deal. You still have A.J. Terrell, and I was taught as a kid. Don't look at just the right now. Look a little bit further in the future. And let's just go ahead and do that with our mock draft. Let's look 9 through 16 and what your picks were in this second part of the NFL draft. Look, you have Lucas Van Ness going nine overall, and Torrey has him going 11th. Why do you think he's going to go right after the Falcons? Look, the Bears need so much. And Lucas Van Ness is one of those guys. He's tenacious. Mm -hmm. He's, I think, a safer pick. He's a guy that can play anywhere on the line. Uh, a guy that I think would fit well for the Falcons, too. The Bears need a lot. You go get those steady interior defensive front guys and really start your rebuild around Justin Fields. Well, and you had mentioned Devin Weatherspoon, and he's here. You have him dropping all the way to 14, which is – a steal. It's pretty late. That's right? a steal for the Patriots. Pretty late. It was yeah. one of those things where, gosh, like, where is he going to fit? He may never make it to 14 because the guy plays like a safety. Mm -hmm. He hits like a Mack truck and, and, and can do everything. If he's on the board at 14, Bill, uh, Bill Belichick, who's stone faced, he might even crack a smile. Yeah, that'd be a huge steal for them. But let's keep moving along in this NFL draft 17 and on. Let's see what you have here. Ooh, who do I want to pick? Will Levis. You have him, I have him going fourth overall. You have yeah. him going 19th to the Tampa Bay Bucks. What's up with that? I think it's just that so many quarterback starved teams are at the top, and then there's a gap. 
And then could he fall all the way to Tampa Bay? I'm predicting that we have two rookie quarterbacks in the NFC South to deal with. Tampa obviously trying to move on from Tom Brady. Look, I could be totally wrong here, and your theory could be right, that he could go number four, and we could see four quarterbacks in the, like, in the top ten. I just sort of thought that this is a good fit for them. Mm -hmm. Tampa may even trade up and try to get this guy. Yeah, and if, if he does end up going to Tampa, it could be a Levis Trask kind of quarterback situation mm -hmm. going on. So we'll keep an eye on that throughout the NFL season. But you have Jalen Hyatt out of Tennessee going to the Ravens. They just signed OBJ. Like, what, what's your thoughts on that? This is another example of Baltimore saying, Lamar, please, please <laughs> sign a long-term contract with us. Right. We desperately want you. Here's another weapon. Here's another way for you to be great and maximize your potential and hopefully to get them to take Baltimore's money. That's why I think Jalen Hyatt, OBJ, Mark Andrews, and Lamar Jackson, whew, look out. That team could be really tough. That could be a very dangerous and potent offense. Let's keep it moving, though, 25 and on to 31. So let's see who do we want here. I want to go right here to this. Huge tight end Huge. in Darnell Washington. He's like 6'7", I think. He is one of the tallest people I've ever been in a room <laughs> with as a Georgia grad myself. But why do you have him going to Cincy? What's so potent about that situation? So Cincinnati just lost Hayden Hurst, mm -hmm. right? They've got Jamar Chase and T. Higgins and all these guys. They need a tight end. Darnell Washington can do so much to make them even more dynamic, if that's possible, working with Joe Burrow. This is a top tier tight end class. He could be the fourth tight end gone. And I think Darnell Washington, good fit for Cincinnati. Yeah, great tight end as well. But let's move from 28 to 29. Mm -hmm. Someone, a team that the Falcons fans watch a lot in the Saints, Miles Murphy. He's dropped far in this draft. Yeah, and that's one of those things, just like Devin Witherspoon, you think, no way he's going to be available, Scott. But some funny things happen, right? That it becomes about needs. I think Miles Murphy, if you think about what the Saints lost, mm -hmm. they lost David Onyemata. They lost so many defensive linemen, Marcus Davenport, and some to the Falcons, right? I mean. Uh, that Miles Murphy fills a need for them. If he happens to still be on the board, maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. I, think, I, I think the Saints swoop him up. Yeah, they might be swooping up a Clemson guy, but everything's still up in the air. Nothing is for sure until Thursday. And something that we didn't really talk about is trades. We didn't do any trades in this mock draft. Mm -hmm. You mentioned it a little bit earlier with the Arizona Cardinals, but what do you think could happen with trades, trading up, trading down in this particular draft? I think so much of it has to do with quarterbacks, mm -hmm. right? If, if there's quarterbacks in the top four, you're maybe pushing a guy like Tyree Wilson, who you like so much, down to number eight, and then you make an easy pick, right? Right. Or or, 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 there's three quarterbacks gone, and then the Falcons pick looks really attractive to a team that wants to trade up above a team like Tennessee and try to get that fourth quarterback. Will Levis, Anthony Richardson, something like that. And if the Falcons can get a top-tier player plus another asset, mm -hmm. I think you do that. In Tory McElhaney's scenario, drop down to 11, get Lucas Van Ness and something else, or maybe, 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 maybe drop down and get Bijan Robinson. Yeah. That may be a thing. I do. think that's a little bit more viable. I can kind of rock with that a little bit more than eighth overall. But we'll see. There's a ton of possibilities for the Falcons, especially if you include trades in that. So, Scott, thank you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure, as always. As I said earlier, just a couple of days away from the 2023 NFL Draft, and we will cover every pick the Falcons make. So make sure to follow the Falcons on social media for all the updates. This has been Scott Bears Mock Draft, presented by Georgia Lottery.